Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this HP Compact DC 7600 that I picked up at a garage sale for $5. Now everyone has been asking me about this machine because I picked this up about two months ago. I said two months ago that I was eventually going to make an overview about it and then I never really did because I haven't had the time due to school. Well I finally got some time today and today we're going to be checking out this machine. But first before I do I have some channel related stuff that I want to talk about. First off uh, the the Inspiron 530S upgrade video has been pushed back a month because this month I've decided to go ahead and have a little go at a small solar project. I posted about that on Facebook so if you're curious about that you can go ahead and uh, check it out. That will be coming up in two weeks when school is finally over. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big video and I think it's something that you guys are going to like uh, but because of budgetary stuff I had to push back the upgrade video because you know that solar project wasn't cheap and now I don't have any money left for the upgrades for the 530S. So, yep, the 530S upgrade video should be happening sometime uh, in late August, I believe. So, uh, look forward to that and look forward to the solar project as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the system now, now that that's out of the way. I'm doing things a little bit differently and starting from the back today because I want to show you guys something. It appears that someone has no idea how to use a screwdriver because they have removed the screws on the back of the case and tried to replace them, but they did a really bad job at replacing them because they are not properly screwed back into their corresponding holes and two they stripped the crap out of every single screw head on the back so I can't even grab a screwdriver and, and try to reseat them on my own because the screw heads are completely stripped uh, I don't know why someone would even do this you know because the side of the case uh, just comes off by pulling back this handle right here so there's really no reason to like take these screws out unless you're trying to completely disassemble the case which you know I wouldn't really see a reason for the everyday consumer to do. I, I personally never even need to completely disassemble the case. So uh, not really sure what's going on there. And uh, I'm going to try to fix it after this video. But it looks like I'm going to have to shift this PC off like that, which is kind of embarrassing. And yes, I do intend on selling this system. I really have no use for it. I have plenty of computers in the back just like this one. I just bought this because I thought it would make an interesting overview subject. So that means in this video, I'm also going to have to prep this for shipping, uh, which means I have to clean it out, wipe the hard drive, and install a new OS on it. Starting from the top, you can see the exhaust fan for our power supply. Not really sure what it's rated at. Uh, we will check that out when I open this thing up and take a look inside. And of course, uh, we will find out all the uh, system information when I turn this on and take a peek at the BIOS. Below that, you can see an exhaust fan for the PC itself. All of our I.O. ports are right here. We have two PS2 ports, one for keyboard and one for mouse. Uh, serial port, parallel port, VGA out for video. You have a total of six USB 2.0 ports on the back of this motherboard. Now, audio interface is right there, uh, Ethernet, and then right below that, it appears that a sound card is installed in this system. Flipping it over to its side, there's nothing much here. Oops, just pumped the mic. Hope that didn't pop too loud. Uh, but on the side, there's nothing much here. You can see the latch to open up the side of the case, and that's really about it. Uh, other side is the same story. We have four rubber feet uh, along with the HP logo, and that's about it for this side. Speaking of rubber feet, Unfortunately, all the rubber feet are not intact on the bottom. It appears the system was used vertically. Uh, only two are remaining. The other two have vanished. And then we'll take a look at the front right here. You can see that uh, just like a lot of the uh, HP Compact systems, this one has a silver front. Uh, we have three bays right here for 5.25-inch uh, drives. We have a DVD drive with light scribe capabilities installed right in the middle. Uh, power button right here, HP logo, two USB ports, audio in and out, and that's really about it as far as the front of the case is concerned. You can see we have two badges. We have a Pentium 4 badge, not really sure which one. It might be a 630, and then we have a Windows XP sticker as well. And speaking of that Windows XP sticker, uh, I have a product key up here. If you guys want to take that, you can have it. The case doesn't look too bad as far as dust and dirt is concerned, so maybe it won't be an absolute nightmare when we open this thing up, which we're going to do right now. So I'm just going to pull this tab back, push back on it, and there we go. We are in. And yeah, it's actually not too bad. It's surprisingly clean. And what in the world? There's like a 
Loose hard drive just flapping around here? Alright, and then I'll investigate that in just a second. As usual, we're gonna start from the top and work our way down, eventually figure out what the heck is going on with that hard drive situation. But right here you can see a 365 watt HP power supply. Below that you can see the exhaust fan for our case. Below that you can see the fan and heatsink for what I believe is a Pentium 4 processor. Uh, we will find out the exact model when I turn this thing on and go into the BIOS. As you can see, I removed the RAM. We have two sticks of 500 and 12 megabytes of DDR2 RAM for a total of one gigabyte of RAM in this system. As you can see, we have four RAM slots right here, heatsink for our Northbridge, PCI Express X16, PCI Express X1, and then two PCI slots, one of which is populated with a sound blaster card. We'll take that out in just a second and take a closer look at it. And here's something that you really don't see, a PCI expansion slot. Um, so you could get one of those uh, PCI boards and connect it up here and gain, uh, I think like two additional PCI slots. I, I'm not sure if it's something that's unique to uh, HP. Uh, I haven't really looked into that lately. I, I've, I've heard of it before, um, but I've never really seen the system with one of those built in. And I think those extension boards are actually pretty darn expensive. Um, Right here, you can see the back of our DVD drive. Uh, is there anything else in there? No, just a big wide of cables along with that IDE cable running to the DVD drive up here. We have four SATA ports. I believe the system is using SATA 2, I want to say. No, once again, something that we're going to have to verify when we go into the BIOS uh, and boot this thing up, of course. And then we have a hard drive right here, which I'm going to try to remove. And a majority of this case is toolless, which uh, makes things nice. Uh, no screws or anything to remove to get that hard drive out and it, wow it is really dusty but we have a 160 gigabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda drive right here rotating at 7200 rpm and this one is also a 160 gigabyte drive uh, but it's a different model this is interesting never really seen this on a Seagate drive before just as consumer storage 160 gigabytes might have to look that model number up to get a little bit more information on it uh, but, but this was the one that was just kind of flapping around inside the case um, and it doesn't have any screws on it so someone was being really lazy and just kind of plopped it in there and they're like all right i'll call the day close the case and i'm like yeah it's not going anywhere i don't really have to worry about securing that drive but yeah, it's not really ideal to have a uh, hard drive flopping around inside your case like that. Here's a better look at that sound card. This is a Sound Blaster CT4780. And from what I've read online, this is actually a pretty decent sound card, even for today's standards. So I think I'm going to keep this. I might take this for a build sometime, or maybe I'll throw this in my primary PC because that is just using integrated audio. The integrated audio on that gigabyte board is decent, but you know, it'd be nice to have a dedicated sound card. Now, someone has went to town on this. Uh, check out these ports up here. They're like all bent up. Now, let me see if I can uh, angle this so you guys can get a better look at that. My camera did not want to focus right there, and I just realized I didn't have my microphone plugged in. But as you can see, someone had a heyday here. Uh, these should be parallel with the board, and as you can see, this one's completely vertical. I can't get it to go back down. These uh, are off the board quite a bit as well. It looks like someone has taken whatever was plugged into them and bent it back and therefore bent the ports back, you know. Oh, man. This this person was not thinking when they serviced this computer. That That's for sure. They were going uh, absolutely mad here with this system. Ah, man. Yeah, but I'll probably keep this around, you know. This alone is worth the five bucks I paid for the system, so not bad, not bad. And you guys know I like to power these things up on camera for the first time and see if anything goes pop, so let's do that right now. I'm going to plug it in. Nope, nothing yet, so I'm going to hit the power button, and it is powering on. Got the HP screen, can I get into the BIOS? Uh, I don't think I made it. There we go, I finally managed to get into the BIOS. I kept hitting escape, but it was actually F10 to get into setup. And as you can see, this system is rocking a Pentium 4 running at 3.4 gigahertz with an 800 megahertz front side bus. Um, so I believe this would be a Pentium 4 650 Prescott. We have two megabytes of level two cache on board the processor. 100 and, oh sorry, <laughs> one gigabyte of DDR2 memory. We already went over that. Uh, there's nothing really else here that looks interesting <laughs> uh, what else can we get into in this BIOS device configuration now uh, we have our hard drive right there 160 gigabyte hard drive I do not have the other one plugged in because it was not plugged in initially uh, we'll check that one out after we take a closer look at what exactly is on this hard drive if, if there's an operating system on it or not uh, where else can we go thermal what is under here fan idle mode 
Oh, wow. Okay, I can rev up the fans all the way. Not sure if that's coming out on mic. Wow. <laughs> all right, that's fun. I could do this all day. And the fans are actually pretty quiet when they're uh, at idle speeds. I can't really hear them, which is nice. Advanced, uh, PCI devices, okay. Yeah, we've already seen all those. USB controller, SATA controller, yada, yada, yada. There's our sound card, and of course our Ethernet controller. Nothing too interesting there. Let's go ahead, exile this, and boot into whatever the heck is on this hard drive. You know, I hear something in the DVD drive, guys. I, I hear something in here, and there is actually something in here. Michael Ortz Instruments? Did someone leave their mixtape in here? All right, let's see what this is. It looks like some sort of audio file. I'm gonna pop it open. Huh. All right, so it's someone's music, either music they created or music they downloaded, and uh, hopefully this doesn't get us pull, uh, get this video pulled off YouTube. I'll just play a little bit of it. I mean, that's not bad. It's kind of repetitive, but, you know, not not, not bad. Um, that might explain the uh, audio card in this thing. I'm pretty sure that did not come stock with this computer because the motherboard has integrated audio. Now, it wouldn't really make sense for them to ship this uh, system with an audio card, especially since this is more of a business class type system. Um, so I, I think the person that uh, previously owned this PC was some sort of uh, music producer, either, you know, professionally or just as a hobby. As you can see, Windows XP is installed on this system, but it is password protected. Now, I could break in, but it's really not worth it because I'm not going to spend too much time on this anyway because I don't like showing other people's information. You know, I usually just play around, uh, open up, you know, system information and check that out, and that's about it uh, on these installs. I, I, I wipe it with D-Band afterwards, and I don't mess around with other people's stuff because I just think it's rude. Um, so I'm going to close out of this. We're going to shut it down. I'm going to plug this hard drive in and see if uh, there's an operating system on it. Yeah, there's not a boot sector or an operating system on this drive, so chances are it's probably just used as a storage drive. It might also be dead because when the person put it back in this computer, they didn't bother to plug it back in. So we will run diagnostics on both of these drives because I need to before I ship this PC. And if both of them work, I'm going to keep one of them for the uh, Inspire on 530S upgrade video. Okay, so here's where I'm at now. I ran diagnostics on both the hard drives and both of them came back A-OK. -okay. So I'm going to keep this Seagate Barracuda drive for the Dell Inspire on 530S along with this. SATA cable because I'm not just going to leave it flapping around in the case and we're going to ship the system off with that other Seagate drive. Now what I'm doing is I'm wiping this drive using D-Band. It's going to take about an hour and a half so I'm going to go off and do some other things during that time. I'm going to wipe the drive using D-Band and I'm going to install Zubuntu 16.04 on it and uh, we'll take a look at performance for just a little bit. Then I have to take the system, uh, tear it down, clean it out, I'll put it back together, and then it'll be ready to be shipped off. So still have quite a bit of work ahead, uh, still have quite a bit of footage ahead, so, you know, there's plenty of video left. Um, but now, yeah, I just gotta wait for this to finish. It's about five hours later, and this thing is ready to ship on the software side. So I wiped the hard drive using D-Band, I installed Zubuntu 16.04, and I just installed all the latest updates, and now I am here. I'm definitely not going to be able to finish this video tonight because it's already uh, 8.30. I still have to clean the system out, and uh, there's no way I'm going to get the video edited and uploaded by tonight. So, yeah, this is going to have to go out tomorrow. But as far as performance is concerned, it's actually pretty decent. It's definitely a usable machine. Uh, it's about as snappy as your typical Pentium for Prescott machine. I mean, there's definitely nothing special here. I'll just start popping open some applications so you guys can get a general feel for performance. Once again, uh, it's running the mill Pentium 4 machine. Nothing special. I'm not going to stay too long on it, but I'll pop open an instance of LibreOffice right here. Uh, we'll just type in the good old generic phrase. Hello, YouTube. All right, so we're going to make that bold. I'm going to change the font, make it bigger. Italicize it, underline it, hey, that's all good. Let's leave it open to demonstrate the system's multitasking capabilities. And speaking of multitasking capabilities, let's pop open Task Manager. Now, oh, let's see, what does our system resource consumption look like? So, we're using about 20% of that one gigabyte of memory in the system right now, if only LibreOffice Writer open, and our CPU usage is pretty much null. Uh, I'll pop open an instance of LibreOffice Calc, and as you can see, 
Applications open relatively quickly. I'll open up a instance of Chromium Web Browser. And by the way, um, once again, this is Zubuntu 16.04, so we're using generic drivers here. I did try to play back some YouTube videos, and I was actually pretty surprised. We got a 720p at 60 FPS, and it was dropping a frame here and there, but for the most part, uh, playback was smooth. And by the way, this does have built... Oh, that was YouTube right here. There we go, we'll navigate to my page, A Computers and Technology. Uh, what was I saying? By the way, this machine does have uh, a built-in speaker, so we will be getting some audio out of this. There you go, you can hear it right now. We'll just pop open the first video. So this is 720p at 60 FPS. You can see, eh, for the most part, playback is pretty smooth. It's dropping a frame here and there, um, but it is watchable. If we drop this down to standard definition 420p, uh, definitely watchable, not dropping any frames there. It looks pretty good as far as playback is concerned. I'll just skip through here. All right, so that's all fine and dandy. Let's get out of this. I'm going to leave the tab open, and we're going to stress the system's multitasking capabilities. Now, we do have that one gigabyte of RAM in the system, so it's going to be pretty decent at multitasking. Oh, it's all caps. So well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's domain name. Okay. There we go. So loaded up the website just fine. I'm going to scroll down here. Yeah, scrolling is a little bit jerky. It's loading up those ads. Uh, there we go. Okay, now it's a little bit smoother. So we got everything loaded up here and uh, scrolling's nice and smooth. Definitely usable. Uh, pretty pleasant web browsing experience overall. I'll just click on an article right now. We'll go to the last thing that I posted. Not just a review on that uh, Android Bluetooth controller. There we go. You can see, hey, that's a o Okay, so we're going to open up another tab. Uh, we'll navigate to the Associated Press website. Why not? There we go. Scrolling through the Associated Press site just fine. Let's open up an article. Computer service used by campaign hacked. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> all right, so let's open up another tab. There we go. That is our I archival site. This is where we have all the HD images of uh, all the computers I've looked at. So if you want to take a look at some, I, I guess, a nerd porn per se, uh, you could go into the archives and check out what I have there. And by the way, HD images of this computer will be posted up on this site. The link will be in the description for you guys. There we go, and you guys can probably hear the system fans revving up in the background. Uh, when the system fans are at full RPM, the system can be a bit noisy, but when you're just sitting at the desktop at idle, it's actually pretty quiet. Uh, you can see the site up now, finally loaded all those images. The connection is a bit slow just because uh, my uh, internet service provider is a bit slow. I think I have like five megabits per second upload, or maybe three or something like that. Something absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we're gonna pop open another tab. What else can I navigate to? I'm trying to think of some sites on the fly here and I just can't, so I'm not gonna have to make some cuts right now. Oh, you know what? Here's a good one. This is one of my favorites because it's really resource intensive. CNN dot, oh my goodness, CNN dot com. There we go. There's just so much stuff going on with this site. It, it It's a mess and it's, I don't know, even with my, you know, primary desktop, the browser sometimes crashes, so uh, pretty taxing site, CNN. There's a lot of ads, a lot of little, like, scripts here and there uh, to slow things down, so let's just give it a go on this system. It's doing okay. Yeah, we're we're starting to seize up here. You can you can tell it's definitely struggling. You can see the loading icon just froze. The sites, you know, I'm trying to scroll through the site and it's really just not having it. What does our uh, resource consumption look like? We're probably hitting uh, close to maxing out our RAM. Actually, you know what? It's not too bad. Uh, we do have swap enabled, so we're using swap space as well. Uh, I should probably turn that. Oh, I guess I'll just leave the swap on. But as you can see, we're just struggling with uh, CNN right now. Eh, got a little bit le better with uh, everything loaded up. That's going to be about it for the web browsing portion. Not really going to stay too long on this. Now I'm going to download a game. Uh, probably going to install Super Tux Cart, and we'll see how that plays back on this. 
You know what? I lied. We're actually going to be playing a personal favorite of mine. This is Open Arena, which is pretty much just like Quake. Um, and as you can see, I have it in windowed mode. That's because in full screen, uh, the uh, brightness is actually really low and it doesn't come out very well on camera for some reason. So I switched it back to windowed mode. Let's just go to our system settings real quick. Check out our graphics settings. You can see everything here. I'm not going to read it off right now. I have it on what would be, I guess, an equivalent to medium graphics settings. Uh, we're going to go back. Go into single player mode, uh, just select a random map, uh, just pick the first one, sure, that sounds good, let's do this. As you can see, frame rate's pretty darn good, uh, definitely getting at least 30 frames per second here. And uh, I never claimed to be any good at this game, just saying, I'm actually pretty bad at it. <laughs> Whoa! And I'm just all over the place there. Ah, oh, Come on, I just want one kill during this video. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah! There's my one kill! Alright. What's this? Oh yeah, lightning gun thing. Where'd I go? Whoa. Oh, awesome. What? I'm tied for first place. No way. Three seconds I fell into this water. Whoa, what? She just did like a backflip. What is that? What was that? How do you do that? You know, and as I said in uh, my last Garage Hill Find video, I could play this game all night. I mean, I, I really do enjoy this. Once again, if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's called Open Arena. I'll see, I I'm pretty sure they have a website, and I'll link it in the uh, description for you guys. Alright, so I'm going to call it for the system demo. It's like 9 o'clock now, and I think I might actually be able to get this thing cleaned up and uh, finished by tonight. So I'm going to try to do that. So let's go ahead and uh, dig back into the system and clean this thing up. Because, you know, it's not too bad, but there, uh, there is a little bit of dust, and it could use a good cleaning. Check that out, that's actually pretty gross down there. As you can see, the CPU and the CPU heatsink are both out of the system right now. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take all of this old thermal paste off both of them, and I'm going to reapply some new thermal paste. I'm just going to use the cheap stuff. This is that uh, $2 Banggood thermal compound, $2 for 30 grams. Not bad. Uh, gets the job done, and you get a heck of a lot of it for $2. If you guys want to check that out, the link will be in the description. Uh, after I reapply thermal compound, I then need to uh, take a look at these fans and see if I cannot oil the bearings on them. And then after that I'm going to be done as you can see systems looking pretty clean now uh, there are some hard to reach places I just couldn't get to but overall uh, looks a lot cleaner looks pretty good you know looks almost like new at this point mmm look that heat sinks all nice and clogged up all right, so things are going very well. I have not run into any issues yet, besides the fact that my autofocus is not cooperating right now here. I'm just gonna do it manually. There, I'll do it myself. But as you can see, the bottom of the heat sink is nice and shiny, nice and clean now. Just gotta dry that off after I am finished with everything. And yeah, guys, sorry about the focus. It just quit on me right then. I'm just gonna take this magnifying glass so we can actually take a look at the CPU. And you can see our Pentium 4 CPU right here, all nice and shiny and ready to go as well. Have my 
been good thermal paste on standby. I still need to remove this uh, this fan right here to oil it, and then I have this one prepped to be oiled. Got my three-in-one out right now. What I'm gonna do is take a couple drops and dump it into that bearing. Uh, I should probably use a tripod right now, but you know, ah, whatever, we'll just wing it. It's getting late, I'm getting tired, eh. We'll just give it a couple drops. There we go. That looks nice. Put the sticker back on. And we'll spin it around a little bit and we should be good. Oh, this one's a brushless fan. Well, I still need to take it out anyway to clean it off. So I uh, got a majority of the dust off of this one. Uh, and this one's oiled and ready to go back together on the heatsink. And you know what? I'd say this thing's uh, ready to be thrown back together now. And at this point, the system is pretty much ready to go. As you can see, it's all nice and shiny inside the case. You just saw I uh, replaced the heatsink and put that being good thermal paste under there. So that's all good. Um, I also put some new rubber feet on the bottom of that PC, so those should last this thing for at least the next five years. Um, someone in the previous video asked me where I got these rubber feet. I got these off Amazon. I will go into my purchase history and see if I can't find them and put the link in the description for you. Um, I, it, it's been a really long time since I bought these, so that might be kind of hard. Might not find that. Uh, the only issue I ran into during this little uh, restoration process was the fact that I couldn't find a bracket that was big enough to fit inside this uh, uh, the slot so that's gonna be bare unfortunately not too big of a deal uh, but it kind of annoys me oh that's another thing I was able to secure all those screws I got my torque screwdriver uh, got in there really hard and was able to remove them and then replace them so all the screws have been properly receded I didn't think I was going to be able to do it initially but you know uh, with some willpower and a lot of force I was able to recede all of those screws properly and it is ready to go guys and I know I haven't been mic'd for the past couple clips that's because the cable doesn't like reach around where I'm going I'm all over the place right now um, but yes the computer is ready to go uh, you know cleaning everything out has made a difference the fans have not revved up once I've been playing around with Zubintu and you know throughout that whole time uh, the fans have just been staying at that idle speed so really nice now not a lot of noise coming from this system at all because those fans are staying at their minimum speeds uh, really glad we we went in there and cleaned all that out and that being said the system is ready to be shipped off and I am done with this video now it's late I'm ready to go to bed I'm gonna edit this together tomorrow and I also got to get a review out tomorrow so uh, tomorrow's gonna be a busy day as well uh, let me flip the camera around so you guys can actually see me I probably look really uh, gross right now I've been sweating in here uh, the air conditioning's been cut off so it's getting really hot and I'm ready to end this video so if you guys have any questions comments or concerns you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section don't forget to drop a like on this video if you didn't like this video please Please tell me why and of course please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, if you want to support me you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links both of which will be in the description you can also support me by checking out my patreon and of course don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page once again guys thanks for watching and I will see you in the next installment of a computers and technology